What's up guys, Turbo Hickey for you today. Today I'm doing a hookah setup tutorial slash uh, tips for hookah smoking. So ultimately this video is geared to actually teach you beginners out there how to actually set up uh, hookah properly and also uh, give you tips and knowledge about what's going on with the hookah and just ultimately tips for to improve your smoke. So uh, thank you guys for watching and uh, thank you. Hey guys, so right now I'm going to go through the actual functionality of the hookah itself. Um, as you see holistically, the hookah is one big thing right here. However, it's composed of five major parts. The bowl, the ashtray, the hookah stem, the vase, and the hose. Um, I'm going to go top to bottom just really quickly explain and also give you some facts about what each one does. So uh, the bowl actually holds the shisha, which is hookah tobacco inside here, has foil on top, poked in holes, and you put coals on top of that foil, which heat the shisha. Now this is a unique way of uh, smoking because you're actually vapor, you're actually cooking the shisha, which is composed of tobacco, uh, glycerin, and uh, what was it called? Honey, yes, and flavoring. But uh, what you actually see from the smoke is actually glycerin, uh, which is safe to inhale, and also it's not harmful to you at all. Um, a lot of people think it's actually smoke smoke, but however, you're never burning anything because the coals are never touching it. Burning is something when you're actually putting something to a flame, or it's literally being burnt by something like a coal. However, this is being sitting on top of the foil and you're never actually burning anything. So this can technically be called vaporizing. Um, yes. <laughs> so the ashtray itself just basically func makes uh, functional use of holding the coals there uh, if you don't want to have them on a the bowl and also ashing them. Uh, so if they get smaller and smaller, obviously there's going to be residue around them so you can get rid of that residue right there. Um, the stem's purpose is mainly to transport this vapor into the water and actually uh, cool down and filter uh, the vapor through water. Um, this specific design is actually made by uh, Khalil Mamoon. This is a Khalil Mamoon hookah. Um, a lot of people actually, uh, hookah enthusiasts and big hookah smokers actually really do like uh, uh, Khalil Mamoon's, especially the one hose. Uh, a lot of people like one hose hookahs because you have the ability to purge, which is this little port right here. Um, this, when you, this gives a, a user ability to blow and also release the uh, stale smoke as well as uh, cool down the hookah without taking anything off. Um, the basis per, uh, purpose is just to hold the water, uh, or yeah, hold the water and just, yeah, hold the water. <laughs> and the hose allows the user to move around freely uh, while smoking. Um, one thing about the hose, uh, when you do have a hookah, um, make sure you know if your hose is not washable or not, uh, non-washable or not. So uh, uh, many hoses that do look like this are non-washable. Uh, that means they have metal coils inside of them, and when you do wash it, uh, the rust, uh, the metal coil is rust and is not safe to inhale. <laughs> so uh, yeah, make sure to do that. Another test uh, I've heard of you could do is put a magnet close to it. If it attracts, then there's coils, which means you can't wash it. But if it's fine, then it's all uh, plastic inside and it should do fine. Um, yeah, another thing, a uh, big thing, a lot of people think that the size of a hookah determines the cloud output of a hookah, which is definitely not true. Uh, the cloud output of a hookah is actually um, uh, determined through the gauge of the hose and the stem itself. That means the size of the inside of the hose and the size of the stem, the width, the diameter of it. Uh, the larger uh, the diameter of both, you're definitely going to get more airflow, which means more cloud output. So uh, yeah, let's get to the setup part. Alright guys, the first step to actually setting up the hookah is actually filling up the vase with water. The purpose of the water is to actually cool down the vapor as well as uh, filter it. Uh, water is known to filter two or three carcinogens. Uh, if there was any burnt anything, it's definitely going to filter through here. Uh, but yeah, it mainly gives a pleasurable effect of cooling down the smoke, which is what basically hookah is, or vapor, sorry. <laughs> but um, yeah, essentially you're going to actually fill it up to a sweet spot. Your sweet spot's going to be about, in general, it's going to be about an inch above the bottom of the stem. So if you put it up to right here, it's going to be about just about an inch uh, right up there. So I have that actually marked off because I know my hookah very well. So I know it's about to the where the leaf is. So I'm going to fill it up with tap water up to the leaf. So a lot of people actually uh, think about using other uh, uh, liquids into the vase, like uh, milk, uh, supposedly give it more um, milkier, I guess, or uh, alcohol to even give you a drunkness. But in my experience, uh, tap water, just plain tap water, is actually gives you the best smoke and best experience. Um, I have put ice in it, and I do enjoy ice, but not all the time. So as you guys can see, oh, a little too much. Uh, yeah, you gotta get that sweet spot, so you know where it is. And so if you put it in, it shouldn't be too high or too low 
of the bottom of the actual where the uh, stem is. So yeah. So once you have that, now you have to actually set up your bowl and fill your bowl with shisha. All right, guys. Right now, I'm going to cover the actual hardest part of setting up your hookah is actually packing the bowl. This takes a little practice and knowledge about what you're actually doing. However, before I start actually putting shisha into the bowl, I'm going to go through the actual different types of bowls that are in the hookah world. <laughs> so there's three main types. Uh, uh, Egyptian slash Chinese mob bowl, which basically allows the shisha to sit on top and has holes at the bottom. The vortex bowl, which actually allows has the shisha sitting here, holds the juices, but also has holes in the inside of the spire to create a vortex airflow. And also, I don't have it with me, but a funnel bowl, which is essentially the same thing as uh, this. However, there's no holes on the side, and there's a hole at the top. Uh, uh, in general use, um, uh, the vortex bowl and the funnel bowl are used to smoke shishas, which is hookah tobacco, that are more wetter. So brands like Starbuzz, Fumari, um, 421, and uh, anything that's really wet and drippy, hookah fina, hookah hookah, uh, what was another one? Uh, I don't know, just random, just really wet hookah uh, shishas you would want to smoke with the Vortex Bowl and the Funnel Bowl. Uh, this is mainly smoke, uh, I usually smoke Al Fokker, Nakla. Uh, you could actually, this is a general bowl you can smoke anything out of. But um, for the use today, I have Starbuzz tobacco. So I'm going to pack the wetter Starbuzz tobacco in this bowl. So I'm going to show you guys how to pack this one. However, if you want, if you're really interested in packing Starbuzz in here or Starbuzz in even a different bowl or any type of shisha in a different type of bowl, just uh, literally just look on Google, just Google how to pack Starbuzz in Egyptian bowl. And there's, there'll be many answers in YouTube that will explain in detail. However, I'm just gonna show you right now how I pack it in a vortex bowl with Starbuzz. So um, the general use with this is that actually you get the shisha. I use using my hands, not tongs, just more easier. And you have your bowl empty around here. And what you wanna do is kind of break it up with your hands and just sprinkle it all the way around. Make sure not to pack it too tight. This uh, this type of method packing with this bowl, Starbuzz and uh, Vortex, you want to actually have it light and fluffy. That's going to definitely give you the most smoke. Um, with this type of bowl, you would actually get, it's uh, almost like a motto of less is more. The less shisha you use, I mean, with the airflow, the airflow makes you the smoke way more powerful if you actually have less and more airflow, or less shisha itself. So the rule with this is kind of just, uh, when you're packing it, make sure you don't actually uh, have the shisha touch the top of this rim right here. Because if you do, when you put the foil on, the foil is gonna touch the actual shisha, and it's gonna burn. It's gonna burn the shisha, and that's gonna actually create the harshness that you feel. Uh, yeah, it's really funny, because a lot of people think the harshness of a hookah is because it's ashy, and that is just false, and it really frustrates me. But it, it when when the uh, huga coals are touching it, or it gets the, the bowl itself, the shisha gets too hot. That's when it's actually um, uh, harsh. So uh, you could cool it down by blowing through it, or just purging it a bunch of times if you have one type of huga. So the general with this, just make sure it doesn't touch the uh, the top of the rim when you kind of like run your finger across it, and kind of pack it light and fluffy. Maybe pack it down a little bit more. And also uh, to actually leave the holes um, kind of just open right there. So you kind of want to like push the shisha back against the wall. So to actually pack a bowl, you need the bowl itself, the shisha, uh, tin foil, and yeah, that's it. Something to poke it with. Oh, did I already say that? Yeah. So what I like to use with foil on top is uh, Reynolds wrap or any type of uh, regular foil to uh, sheets. So you're gonna put one on top, kind of have it, put it down like this, airtight. Oh dang! I should have wiped off my hands. Oh well. And uh, yeah, the reason why two oh shiny side down. Sorry, yes, this is very important. Uh, reflects the heat back into the bowl, keeps it hotter, theoretically. And uh, also, there's health reasons. I don't know why, but yeah, uh, just kind of healthier. I guess I don't know some shit. But <laughs> yeah, so I like to put this, uh, tap it just to know where the spire is. So with this type of bowl, you're gonna put around 20 to 30 holes all the way around. So I like to start like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Going around, kind of spacing them evenly, if you could see that right there. Was that 13? Shit, oh well. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 
So as you see, uh, with this type of bowl and this type of packing, you could also Google kind of like what to pack or what to, how what kind of formation you want to do. But with this, you're gonna uh, not use too many uh, holes, and also you're just gonna pack it light and fluffy. So, and yeah, here's the rest of your bowl. So, there you are. All right, guys. So right now I'm gonna talk about coals. Uh, before I start heating up the coals, I want to stress you guys to use actually natural coals. Um, natural coals are actually made from coconut shells. Uh, and also other elements, but coconut shells are the most popular, like brands like Coconara, Coco Buzz, uh, Coco Jamara, anything coconut. However, uh, this is one of my favorite brands to use. Um, uh, these are natural, made from coconut shells. They are, uh, have no chemicals like quick lights do. Quick lights are you actually light up by a lighter and they just sizzle all the way through. I mean, but they have chemicals obviously that do that, so it's not really healthy for you. And also, these last a lot longer. Uh, and they just give the heat distribution just way better. So I just want to show you the formation of how I'm going to put it on my bowl throughout my smoke, sm smoke session. So I'm going to put one right here, two, three. So as you guys can see, they're all equidistant from each other. Oh, shit. On the edges of the actual bowl. Because the air is going through the middle, it's far easier and it's better to have them, or it's better to have them uh, on the edges of the bowl, farthest away from the thing, just start it up. And you're, it's going to take about 10 minutes to start up. However, after that 10 minutes, uh, your bowl is going to be fully heated and you can get that full smoke session. So, uh, and once uh, it gets kind of white all over the uh, coals and it's time to ash them, then uh, I usually move them. I usually take off, let's say, two. And I remember where that one was, right? So I put them right here. So basically, all right, so you're cooking the shisha that hasn't been burned yet, and you move this one after you ash them. So when you have the coals right there, it's burning that shisha right there, and then when you just rotate them just a little bit, uh, their placement, then it's cooking the new shisha. A lot of people used to uh, like to do this with uh, new sets of coals, uh, like like go through all the coals with uh, like one place, and then put another coals like right here in the open spaces uh, when these are done. But I prefer just to enjoy the smoke, like an hour long, an hour and a half smoke session instead of like the two hour and a half or just longer smoke session. All right, so let's cook these coals. All right, guys, so I just put the coals on the electric stove. You must use an electric stove uh, to actually cook these. You couldn't use a gas stove, which is really a hassle, and technically you're not supposed to. But um, right now I just threw them on, and about uh, four minutes in, they'll be heated halfway, like red hot halfway up, and then that's when you want to flip them and then put them on for another couple minutes. So I'll, I'll come back to you in about seven or eight minutes and uh, see what these are doing. All right guys, so it's been about seven, eight minutes and uh, uh, I flipped them halfway through. Uh, so now they're all, and a good in indication is to see if they're all ready or if they're ready if, this, if they're all red hot. And as you can see, they definitely are. So uh, we're gonna take the, turn off the stove and put them on my ashtray to carry over to my hookah. So I'll be right there. All right guys, so I just put the coals right on my hookah uh, bowl. I'll put them in the formation that I just showed you. And uh, I'm gonna take a few puffs, so. Obviously the bowl just, uh, just started. Uh, it's just heating up right now. Once it gets its full potential, about 10 minutes, it'll be uh, uh, pretty thick clouds. So I'll come back to you guys in 10 minutes. Hey guys, back to you. Uh, it's been about 10 minutes sitting on the bowl. And I've just been puffing on it. And uh, right now it has full potential, I'd say, so. Give you, show you guys a few puffs. As you guys can see, big white puffy clouds. Um, smoke is smooth, or vapor. <laughs> the, the hookah is smooth, it's nice. Um, yeah, that's basically the whole set tutorial. Um, two little tricks. Uh, if it gets too hot, if you have a one hose hookah, you can purge it, like you see right here. You blow into it, it kind of cools down, releases air through there. Or if you don't have one, you take off the coals on the ashtray, take off the bowl and blow through the bowl to actually cool down the bowl. Um, that's if it's getting harsh to fix it. Um, however, uh, if there's not enough heat and you're not getting enough heat, well, obviously, but you could easily get uh, yeah, more tin foil and wrap the bowl actually with the tin foil. That will isolate the heat and make the uh, air flow uh, just heat up the bowl a lot more. Um, be careful not to burn it, and that can easily get harsh, so uh, watch out for that. And uh, they actually do have wind coverage you can buy for that too, but uh, yeah, there you go guys. That's basically the thing, or tutorial, so. Thanks for watching.